We've gotten bigger since we were kids, so shouldn't our toys match that? It's Morphin Time! Hello, this is Sad here, and welcome to another Super 7 Ultimates review series. A potential series. This is going to be Wave 1 of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates. Now, this is spinning off of a video I did a little while ago called Everybody's Making Turtles, which essentially was going through all the different companies making Ninja Turtles figures and comparing and contrasting them to see what each of them are doing. Now, I have had a pretty good run reviewing the Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats, even months after their release, so I thought, hey, let me try it with Turtles. And, you know, basically when it comes down to these videos, uh, viewer support is how I know to continue making them. So hitting that like button, telling me in the comments, sharing the links around to other turtle friends that may not know about my videos would be all very appreciated. And if there is enough attention on this one, I'll continue forward to do wave two, wave three, wave four, etc. cetera. Uh, just basically seeing where the interest is in these types of videos. Now, Wave 1 did come out back in summer of 2020, so they've been out for a while, and they have been reissued, so I think they're fairly available nowadays. Originally, they ran for $45, so while Super 7 has bumped the price to $55 due to cost uh, increases, the figures of Wave 1 have stayed $45 on most places, and they should be easy to find. So I hope that this video is well-informed. Especially because I'm not going to be just straight up praising this wave because I have a problem with two of the figures in particular and we will get into that as we go through the review. So let's take a look at wave one of the Super 7 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates and see if they've really captured the Playmates vintage style in a larger 7 inch scale. All right, so we're starting with Raphael. Here's the packaging. Uh, it's very similar to the Thundercats packaging where you've got like logo on the back and stuff and a symbol on the front and you can see the name and then you can pull the slip cover and boom, there everything is zint. Because I didn't feel like repackaging the Turtles figures. I did it for my Thundercats reviews, but uh, yeah, I just didn't feel like doing it this time. So anyways, but I like the back and I like the little bios. Because we got uh, Raphael, the witty voice of the turtles. Raphael's hot-headed and most opinionated, impulsive, and restless a ninja turtle. Raphael loves nothing more than to test himself in battle and trains for sheer enjoyment. He usually is the one to leap into action. It's nearly impossible to get him to back down. So here is Raphael. Now, for those of you that watched the uh, Everybody's Making Turtles video, you've probably seen this guy and the Super 7 Turtles because I did feature them prominently as being one of the main leads. But I thought, let's get into some specifics on the figures. So this guy is pretty cool looking um, in a lot of ways, but I think the biggest thing with these turtles compared to some of the others that I've handled, they articulate better, uh, which is funny considering you got single jointed knees and single jointed elbows uh, compared to some of the other NECAs. And if you want to see this as a comparison to other turtles, I think I did that pretty good in uh, Everybody's Making Turtles. But uh, when it comes down to the figure itself, uh, the actual, like, engineering is pretty neat because, you know, you got your arms are kind of basic stuff, and the elbows not going 90 is a slight problem, but I found it's not actually that big of a deal. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed was the waist joints because what's kind of neat about it is it's a free-floating ball joint up in the torso. Uh, let's pull these out of the way just for now. So it's a free-floating ball joint up in the torso, and that moves around and turns. So because this is a soft rubber piece in front, you actually can get some waist swivel out of a turtle, which is pretty cool. And the uh, the Power Ranger Ninja Turtles actually use a very similar system to this, uh, ironically. So pretty neat that that exists because I think that actually is what gives this the extra edge on a lot of turtles figures is being able to turn the waist. It adds a lot more dynamicism to the posing which is pretty awesome. So pretty much they are more articulated than the Thundercats, uh, which is which is nice. But in general, like the posability is pretty good. So I think this has got like a nice mid ground between um, style and substance uh, in terms of articulation versus look. And just the look is fantastic. I mean, uh, you can see just the, the depth of detail that they've taken from those original sculpts that they've added to with the little like nicks in the shell and then just the overall texture, and then they paint wash, they add it on top of it. It's just really great. I love, you know, everything down to the belt. Like, you can see the textures that make it look like an actual, like, nylon belt uh, is really cool, and, like, the rubber sort of belt on the side, uh, including those extra holes that I still am not really sure what those are for. 
Um, if anyone knows in the comments, let me know and I'll try to include it in another video. Uh, but just down to the, the musculature, the way the shading is done, because these are there, there is like a light black wash on the legs here. And then down to like the knee pads, where they're just really dinged up, like they look used, which is amazing because it, it gives it life. It really does. Like these are really incredibly detailed figures, like the paint at the toes. You know, while these figures do cost, well, this wave at least was $45 a figure, I think there's a lot to be said about the, the paint sculpted detail uh, in these figures. And I think that's also why they're a little bit more, I mean, in, in general, because Turtles is more popular than Thundercats, I think they've been getting a lot more attention than the Thundercats line, because the Thundercats line does do those realistic details, but still trying to go for the cartoon look. Whereas these are going in and putting in like scars in the shell because the vintage toy design had that going for it. So they're go going for a different aesthetic. They're not going so cartoony. And so because of that, you get like all these extra sculpted and painted details. Like all the paint here on the belt is just really cool. Speaking of heads, this is the default head, which is the one based on the original toy. These, uh, this version, I think I have the version two, I wanna say, and that had a set of size in the holsters and then a set of size in the box. Uh, so technically mine came like this, a pretty solid turtle figure. Before we look at the accessories, I do wanna get the size comparisons out of the way uh, between a turtle and some of the other major toy lines that work in this space. All right, so when we're talking about other popular toy lines, I figure what better way to start than with Super 7's Thundercats. So you can see that the Turtles, uh, in general, they scale a little smaller. They're all 7-inch scale. The Thundercats, they're taller just canonically. Uh, most of them are adults. These are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So they are a bit shorter than the Thundercats, uh, which, honestly, it works for me. Essentially, they do fit really well together. But something that's no longer in a similar scale and styling would be uh, Masters of the Universe uh, with Masterverse here. So with Trapjaw being a towering over a turtle, that could be, you know, accurate for all we know. Hey, here's an 80s property that continues to reinvent itself. Uh, it's Star Wars. I say 80s just because the toys came out late. But uh, here's a Star Wars Black Series Echo from the Bad Batch. You know, standard size Black Series figure. Here is a comic book Marvel Legend with Spider-Man 2099. Here's an MCU Marvel Legend for good measure, just because... Well, they are slightly differently scaled. Here's a G.I. Joe Classified series figure with the bat. So you can see that, you know, if you're trying to put together 80s stuff, it's going to work out pretty good. And if you're an Injustice Gods Among Us fan, if you're trying to scale maybe these turtles to the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line, not quite. I, I'd say if you're trying to get something that's going to match better with DC Multiverse, go for like the NECA movie turtles. And of course, we have to do the obvious comparison, which is the... Super 7, toy styled Raphael with the Playmates Vintage Raphael's 1998 reissue. I'm sorry, I wasn't alive in the 80s. Anyways, uh, so looking at the Vintage figure, looking at the Super 7 figure, you can see a lot of those design elements, the double banded uh, side holders, the extra weapon holster in the back, and then the, uh, the head sculpt, of course, is just pretty much the same expression and same styling. And that's what's really cool, because you can see how, like, the, the, the chest is smooth, but they've added texture. But looking at the back, you can see the scars in the shell, and you can see the scars in the shell here. There's just a lot more of them on this one. And that's what I think is probably the coolest part about this, is they've taken ideas that were put into the original designs and the original sculpts of the original figures, but they've just amplified them to be that larger scale. Because they're almost twice, twice as big, which is pretty dang cool. All right, let's talk about accessories. First of all... He's got hands that go up and down and are open. He's got fists. He's got uh, hands that have a wider grip between the fingers for the size. He has other hands that are basically those hands, but they move in and out. And then he has these open gesturing hands for gesturing. Now he does come with an alternate head. And this alternate head features rounded eyes, a more detailed bandana, and then the longer bandana tails. So as we've discussed, he does come with his sigh. These are a gray plastic version whereas in the package there was these silver painted ones. And I'm actually glad the gray plastic ones were included in the Psy holsters because these got super bent by the packaging and that would be unfortunate if it was the only pair of Psy he had. So I'm going to use these. I do think the metallic paint looks better, but yeah, they're really, really messed up. Uh, so, you know, I hope that there's better packaging for some of these bladed weapons in the future so that this doesn't happen because this is this is just bad. They should not be this warped out of the packaging. So just like the vintage toy, he comes with a bunch of extra weapons he never used in any media, like this thing, that thing. 
and this thing, which fits in that holster. Plus, he comes with two shuriken, which are pretty neat, even if they're difficult to hold. And honestly, he holds them better than any of the vintage toys did. Just in case having all those things nicely painted wasn't your jam, you also get them on the original weapon sprue, which was a thing back in the day. They're like, hey, cut out the accessories yourselves. As for new accessories, he includes two versions of the turtle com in an open and closed position. And to wrap up his accessories, he's got a slice of pizza. So overall, Raphael is a pretty great Ninja Turtles action figure. Yeah, I really haven't had any complaints so far besides the size being bent, but there is one minor thing. It's a problem with a lot of Turtles figures because of those big old shells. His stability ain't the greatest. Uh, let me try with less force. Okay, now he's actually holding. Uh, sometimes the hips or the ankles will shift slightly and he'll fall over. And that's just the nature of turtles, um, because the shells. But you get them posed properly, you can actually, compared to pretty much any other Super 7 figure I've reviewed, meaning Thundercats, actually get some really cool, nice, dynamic crouch poses, and they can balance out pretty good. So you get Raphael down and centered, you can shake your table a little bit, but if you move it front and back, yeah, he's going to go down because they're turtles. But other than that, fantastic action figure. So here we have Splinter's box, nice Splinter logo on the front, pretty much the same otherwise, uh, you know, empty package because I'm not repackaging these. Splinter, the good guy leader. Splinter, a mutant rat, is the philosophical and martial arts teacher, the sensei, to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He is a master in ninjutsu and has taught the turtles the secrets of the ninja, the Bushido Code, and the warrior's way. So here is Splinter, the big rat himself. Uh, this is, I, I hate to say it because it's not a bad figure, it's my least favorite of the, the Turtles Super 7 figures so far, and I kind of want to articulate why. So he's, you know, a great, re we talk about the vintage recreation thing, let's just bring in my uh, vintage slash 1998 reissue of Splinter. You can see he's got the same, you know, snout, the same teeth, the whited out eyes, you know, the whole bit there, uh, down to the feet even, the tail sticking out the back, as well as the cloth robe. Great stuff. Um, I don't know if Vintage Splinter is that great of a figure, because he doesn't do as much as the others. And then this figure has this problem of, uh, much like the Vintage figure, where the feet are kind of raised, and he doesn't come with a stand. He's got peg holes, so if he had something else, which is what I do on my shelf, but we're talking about what it includes in the box. You got to really balance him out with this tail here, or else he is just going to fall over constantly. Uh, and on top of that, while his feet are articulated, uh, they rotate here and here, but they don't, this one won't side to side for me. It will go one way, but not the other, but it's still kind of stuck. And so because of that stuckness where it doesn't do the side to side, it's really hard to get his feet to be flat while hunched and then getting him to balance and look natural. It's it's not the greatest. Uh, I think that, you know, it's a problem that comes from recreating the Playmates design. And outside of him being Splinter, of course he was a necessity for the collection once I decided to start collecting these. But he's just, he's just frustrating to stand. Uh, Cause see, like there he'll stand better, but his legs look weird. I can't really find a natural standing position for him where he doesn't fall over. So that's just kind of the bummer with Splinter. Uh, other than that, he is really nicely detailed. I do wish he had a different head. Uh, with a lot of the others, they have alternate heads, even like bigger guys like Bebop, but Splinter just has the one, uh, which is fine, I guess. Uh, you know, it would have been cool to get like a, a cartoon styled head or a comic styled head or comic styled. That's what I was looking for. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks good otherwise. And articulation wise, I think he is, yeah, kind of lacking compared to some of the others. I do like the, uh, the tail recreating uh, down to this being articulated the fur into the non-fur part. Not really sure what this was supposed to imply, but I'm glad they did it. Um, but yeah, let's let's do articulation. So his head slightly moves left and right, a little bit up and down. Shoulders move out, up and round. Uh, elbows bend, swivel, wrist swivel, pivot. There, uh, there is a waist swivel, like right in the middle. Uh, hips that move out, forward back. Knees that sort of bend a little bit, rotate. Feet, like I mentioned, bend, rotate, and the tail rotates 360. Uh, it moves up and down, and then it also pivots. So, I mean, if you really need to, you can have his tail really far out there, and that probably is the best way to balance him. Just doesn't look supernatural. In terms of height, uh, here's Raphael. 
Uh, just use Raphael as your barometer of size. So when Splinter is full standing like that, uh, if you hunch him down a little bit, he's a little shorter. Now in terms of accessories, much like uh, Jaga and Mumrod the Ever-Living, Splinter does come with two different robe options. So this is the cloth one, which I much prefer, but being the reviewer that I am, I'm going to switch it out for the plastic one. So this just, uh, I would never recommend trying to pull this apart at the buckle, because I don't think it's designed to. It looks sewed in. But if you are a person who likes the plastic look, your figures, this does give you the option, and I think that's great. I'm never going to use the plastic, because I do like the cloth. Uh, it does look more like the vintage figure. And in general, I don't have an opposition to soft goods, but you can see they really did paint the, the guy all the way around. But this does peg in, so you can have this, this robe. It does restrict his articulation a lot, as you'd imagine. It is plastic and not cloth. Uh, of note, one of the things I wish the figure did, so on the vintage toy, it was this plastic belt with the, uh, the cloth on it. This one is a plastic belt with a plastic, but it's molded into it instead of being a separate piece. So you are kind of stuck with this belt. Like I would have, you know, I would have thought that they would have included a plastic belt separate to go with the cloth to give this look to them. Um, but they ultimately did not And again, that's another, it's not a bad figure for not doing that. It's just a little bit of a letdown. But yeah, I mean, in terms of a splinter figure, I've seen better. I've seen worse. Uh, unfortunately, I think he always just ends up getting the short end of the deal. He's fine, but he's not amazing. However, I do really like his accessories. So in terms of accessories, Splinter does have multiple hands. He's got these kind of crazy rat hands, flat rat hands, holding rat hands, and fist rat hands. I should stop saying rat hands, huh? So his iconic vintage accessory was a bow and arrow, and it's recreated here. Nice string on the bow. There is three arrows included, just like with the vintage toy. So there's, there's one, there's two, and he's holding three. Unfortunately, the only hands I can get any of this to work with are these weird open hands. So the arrow is pretty much just hardly holding, and same with the bow. It, it wedges in, and again, he starts to fall over. Um, but yeah, these hands are too tight to hold the bow. These ain't holding anything, and the others are fists. I think he needed two specific bow and arrow hands. He does come with two shuriken, just like Raphael did. The vintage accessory I love that also helps with his balance is his cane. This was one of the uh, my favorite pieces from the vintage figure. It's a cane, but it's also a sword. Try getting that one through airport security splinter. Uh, I love this thing. I love the little sheath. It's like a, a surprise hidden blade thing, just right out of like martial arts films. It's great. Much like with Raft, you get all the vintage accessories in brown on painted plastic, minus the bow. And for other accessories, we have a mug, which was new. And I like it. I love the steam rising from it. It's such a cool effect. I just wish there was a better hand to hold it because this looks super dang awkward and the hole isn't really big enough to fit over one of his fingers. Splinter needed more hands. He also comes with a walking stick that's very similar to the one from the cartoon and some other media and comics and such, but I, I really do like the hidden blade one. He also comes with a cute little baby pre-mutated turtle. And just one, not four. Um, and I, I would have traded this guy for two extra hands to hold some of the accessories better. Or like, get rid of the fists that I don't think he ever needs. Like, two fists, sacrifice the plastic on this poor guy, Give us, give us four different hands. Now, unless you're a diehard Splinter fan or collector that collects just Splinter figures, there's absolutely no reason to get this guy unless you're collecting the line as a whole. He's just not great. Uh, there's a lot of good things about him, like the detail, the sculpting, the articulation uh, in concept. And I love some of the accessories, but he can't hold half the accessories well. The other half of the accessories are kind of useless. The robe situation, like I said, you know, there's no way to mix and match the plastic belt with the cloth robe. It, there's a lot of ideas here I like, but none of them are really executed well, uh, except for except for the sword. I love the sword. Unless you're collecting a splinter to go with your turtles or with your other characters, it's, he's not really great on his own. He's only a whole collection piece, and uh, I can't really recommend him otherwise. All right, so next up we have Baxter Stockman. Uh, the packaging is purple now, because all the villains are purple, and I love that the symbol here, with the uh, the manhole cover, it's got Stockman, right, the fly, but it's got the little mousers in there. Really cool stuff. And yeah, opening it up, there it is, empty box, turn around, different colors, just because it's more purple, more villainy, and we got the description. Baxter Stockman, a man with the mind of a scientist and the body of a common house fly, buzzes around town, annoying the turtles and other decent reptiles. 
That is a massive run-on sentence, guys. Get it together. Created accidentally in Dimension X by a malfunctioning disintegrator unit, Baxter flurried himself into an avenging fury. Convinced by Shredder that the turtles were solely responsible for his rebirth as an insect, Baxter now vents his hostilities towards our half-shelled heroes. So here is Baxter Stockman. Pretty great-looking figure. Really large, too. Here's a turtle. So you can see that he is not only body-wise much bigger, he's also just proportionately larger. Really great giving it the mutant evil vibe going on. So with Baxter Stockman here, uh, this is a cool figure hampered by the same exact problem that hampers Splinter, but it's multiplied. That is haunched feet. I don't have the vintage toys. I don't know how accurate this is to it, you know, hands-on, but uh, his haunched feet means he has zero stability. Uh, this is a problem that I, I've noticed with some of the figures, and this is what I'm going to call out to, because while this is a great detailed sculpted figure, he just can't stand well. Uh, it's the same exact problem Splinter has, where he's got like the, the digitigrade legs, uh, so you try balancing him out, but the problem is he doesn't have a tail like Splinter, so when he goes to tip, he's tipping. Uh, this is unfortunate, because I think that the figure is great. Uh, it also was like one of the first ones I got. But unless you have his legs really hunched down like this, like unless you have him really haunched over, like there he's stable. He's stable there. But if you try to adjust him in any way, it's, it's over. So on that, let's look at him. Uh, he's really cool looking. Uh, the vintage fly design is just slightly nightmare inducing with the hair around the fly face. I love the ripped shirt. You got the surgical instruments sort of there, like the syringe. And then you got, you know, like his bow tie is still on. And this is a rubber overlay, so you can actually kind of pull it back. See some more of the sculpted detail on there. It doesn't come off uh, naturally. You can see, I love the little like, details like, oh, hey, we sculpted in his wristwatch right under the sleeve. Really cool stuff. Uh, you know, asymmetrical pant tears. More natural fly-looking stuff. And, uh, yeah, just really cool. Uh, and especially when you look at the back arms as well. They have those green veins painted in. Just is amazing. And the, the wings themselves which are sculpted and painted with all those little purple splotches. Uh, plus the back, again, gives it a very nice, realistic look. I love the little uh, fly tail. Didn't quite tear the pants, but you know it's quite there. So yeah, his only major flaw is the balance, um, but he does look good. Articulation-wise, head moves left and right, so you can just get him in that really twitchy fly motion, where he's just kind of twitching back and forth, looking around. Uh, you got shoulders rotate. They're actually ratcheted which is pretty nice. Elbows that are single jointed, but move 90 degrees, uh, pivots in and out, wrist swivels, uh, a little bit of a waist, like upper body cut, not much. Hips, and then like I said, the legs do extend out, so you got bends, rotations here and there. But unless he is down, like completely down, he is gonna fall over. <laughs> and that is, that sucks. It basically means his legs could have just been molded like that. Uh, but anyways, the wings, uh, they, they rotate like this. The arms, uh, the extra arms, they pose actually a little bit better than his main arms, uh, but they're pretty good. They move in and out and rotate. These are the only hands on them, which are these giant grabby hands, and that's fine. I don't think we need any uh, additional hands there. You can't do the whole Venom thing of like holding all his accessories at once or something, but there you go. I mean, that's pretty much Baxter Stockman, but what does he come with in terms of accessories? So in addition to the fists I have on him, he has these open hands, holding hands for the fly swatter and holding hands for the mutagen ray. So looking at his mutagen ray, this is essentially just, you know, a standard little gun. It's got the little wheel on the back. It doesn't have any like detail for like what animals he's going to try to like, you know, shoot people with to mutate them, but it's pretty cool. It gives him some dynamicism. Definitely. It's probably my favorite of the accessories overall. So this is where I have to confess a failure as a toy collector and reviewer. I misplaced the fly swatter. Here's the weapons uh, rack that we got, you know, the vintage style thing. This is the fly swatter. There's a green one with a little, like, smash turtle on it. It's nicely painted. It's really great. He can hold it. Uh, I don't really want to take this off the rack, but we're going to try anyways uh, to get this on. He can hold it like that. Uh, he's got two specific hands for it. It looks cool. I've totally misplaced it. Um, I don't know how because I'm pretty sure I put him on the shelf holding it. I do know that he did that number on the shelf and it may have slipped out of his hand. So on that note, I don't have the fly swatter. I'm sorry, I can't find it. This is what it looks like, just unpainted. 
The other thing is this accessory is weird and I don't understand it. I've not seen a single photo. I've been looking. I've not seen a single photo that really captures what the heck this is. I've seen some people hold it, the fly swatter and this attached to it. Uh, does this clip to the wing? No. Does this clip to the, the like weird extra hand? Not really. I, this is a vintage accessory. You know, it, it, there it is on the rack as well. I have no idea what this is. I, I just, if anyone's got some kind of clue on this, I'm completely clueless. And I, you know, sometimes I have to admit that I've, I've done my research. I've looked for stuff, uh, look for info, but I just don't know what you're supposed to do with this besides clip it to the bottom of the fly swatter for some reason. He's got a mouser. Mouser's pretty cool. So these are little like robots that Baxter Stockman built back when he was human that chased down rats. Um, they ended up getting, you know, used to chase down Splinter. Uh, I'm just playing with it, I guess. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot. The uh, legs move like this, and the mouth opens and closes. If you wanted more mousers, there's a five pack coming out. I don't know if they have any articulation updates. Because, yeah. Oh, wait. You know, never mind. Scratch that. I just, I never moved the head enough. There we go. The head does move. You can have this happy little guy chasing mice all day long. So overall, Baxter Stockman is, just like Splinter, okay. A lot of the problems do come from the vintage toy design that it's trying to replicate, such as the legs. And then other problems come from, he's made of really dense plastic, so when he falls, he really lands. And uh, that does concern me. If you're going to have figures like this, I think they should include stands automatically if they're not going to be too stable. They're really cool, really detailed, have that sort of hand feel of, hey, it's your vintage toy, but bigger. Uh, which also means your vintage toy problems, but bigger. And overall, while I still do love this line, Wave 1... Uh, for me, wasn't like quite a smash hit uh, because of these two figures in a row. See, this is why the sword cane is the best accessory for Splinter, because now he can actually fight back against the mousers with more than just wooden stick. Now, there is one other figure in Wave 1, which I don't own. I think I mentioned this in the Thundercats reviews. I, you know, I get every single Thundercat. Thundercats is very much closer to my heart. I love Ninja Turtles, but I also own a lot of Ninja Turtles toys where I don't own like a ton of Thundercats. So I don't own everything, and that includes the Foot Soldier. It looks great. It looks like a great Foot Soldier figure. When it comes to army builder types, I like to at least have two uh, just to make it feel like worth it. And I didn't really want to spend like $90 just on Foot Soldiers because, well, there's enough bad guys in the line that I didn't really need them. So I ended up passing, but I don't have one. So I'm not really going to review it any further than that. So that's my review of Wave 1 of the Super 7 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates. I like this line a lot. Uh, Wave 1, you know, was kind of a neat start. I think it surprised a lot of people because Super 7 was going into new territory. They weren't continuing a Mattel line or anything like that. They were upping the vintage uh, Turtles toys. And I think it's a great proof of concept. But I think things get better with Wave 2 and beyond. And uh, yeah, we'll be taking a look at those in the future, presuming that this video does well. If this one goes completely under the radar, I don't know if I'm going to put in the, the time for those other videos. So if you want to make sure that you see a review of Wave 2, 3, 4, and beyond, be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and tell me what your favorite figure of Wave 1 is, if you own them, if you don't, just whichever. Uh, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to keep up with future uploads in case I do get back to doing those other reviews because i do have most of the figures from waves two three and four so it would be worth doing if everyone is interested so share it around tell me you want to see more and there will be more on the channel so on that uh be sure to check out hero club at hero-club.com for turtles news and more my awesome graphic designer on twitter at darkclaw 643 and if not next time this is sign out saying goodbye